Hello, this is Kai Forley, uh, once again, um, testifying on behalf of uh, H375, a bill in the, uh, currently in the Vermont House that seeks to promote and incentivize um, the use of ecological toilets and gray water systems. This is part three of my three-part testimony. Um, this is section number three. Uh, this one I'm calling International Sustainable Sanitation Efforts. Um, again, thank you for the opportunity to testify. And uh, I'll just jump right in. So I'll share my uh, screen here. All right. Uh, we all know that Vermont is no longer isolated from the rest of the world, and that it's the globalized nature of information that allows us to learn best of the best. Well, as I alluded to earlier and promised to return to, there are no sustainable sanitation endeavors under, uh, underway in other, way in other parts of the world. We all know that Vermont is no longer isolated from the rest of the world and, and that it's the globalized nature of information that allows us to learn to learn from the best of the best. Well, as I alluded to earlier and promised to return to, there are numerous sustainable sanitation endeavors underway in other parts, parts of the world. I hope, I hope we'll be able to serve as inspirations for what we can accomplish here in Vermont and also uh, per, show us the potential that exists for Vermont to become a leader in the West in these kinds of innovative approaches to sanitation. Um, these uh, approaches are, our approaches are already underway. In our, uh, parts of the world are already serving other peoples, not only well, but better than those systems that we take for granted here at home. I'll begin this section by playing a brief snippet uh, from a video recorded by IDUBE Media in which Neil McLeod, uh, provides a summary of his organization's approach to sanitation. Mr. McLeod is the, san is the uh, person who, prior to his recent retirement as head of water and sanitation at Ethiquini Water and Sanitation, was responsible for the provision of water, of water and sanitation services to 5 million people in Durban, South Africa. As you watch, I urge you to keep in mind that during his tenure, Mr. McLeod oversaw the single largest rollout of urine diversion dehydration totality that the world has ever seen, some 82,000 and growing that serve over half a million people. In comparison, Vermont's population, population currently sits at uh, just under 627,000 people. Also, please note that Ethiquini is the original Zulu name given to the place that white South Africa renamed Durban. Here we have a uh, slide showing you obviously a map of the world. The letter B is Montpelier, Vermont, and the letter A is Ethiquini, South Africa. main message is to say that people generally look at a flushing toilet as the as the gold standard and something to aspire to even our census i see yesterday if you don't have a flushing toilet you're not you're regarded as having no toilet which is crazy so it's you know it's a tap in your house or electricity in your house or a flushing toilet in your house and we are saying that we can't carry on using flushing toilets nobody can not even the rich people and so it's trying to move away from this idea that a flushing toilet is something to aspire to. And also to deal with this perception that a flushing toilet is what the wealthy people have, and a dry toilet is what you give to poor people. Um, and rather try and move that debate to saying that everybody needs to change their toilet. The toilet that, that was invented in 1860 is no longer relevant in the 21st century. And so we've made basically no technology advances in those 160 years and we need to do something and so the work that we're doing is trying to find ways to replace the old flushing toilet with something that doesn't need water so that we can have a decentralized system process the effluent recover the nutrients which is another big concern we're running out of nutrients for agriculture then what goes to the sewage works will be clean the sewage works will be a lot simpler we won't permit the environment the solution will be a lot, affordable, a lot more affordable to our customers and to ourselves. And so there's a win-win all the way around. So that's my message. Something. So I, I, I thought you would all appreciate that um, that video, given the the man's stature, uh, what he was responsible for, and his uh, and his attitudes on the on the issues uh, in play here. Um, moving along, uh, and Ethiquini. Uh, 
It's the local water, uh, obviously, now that you've seen that video, uh, where you go to sign up for a, re a free urine diversion toilet and, if you like, a waterless urinal, too. Uh, those are provided um, free of charge to uh, Ethiquini's customers, those that uh, are not served by other sanitation systems. It would uh, it should be great. Uh, should should be of great be of great interest. Tell that not only do participating customers of the Ethiquini municipality benefit from uh, annual complimentary emptying of the uh, desiccated contents of their urine diversion dehydration toilets, feces vaults, uh, and I should note that uh, currently that material is being buried on site. Um, not a major concern in terms of nutrient. Uh, Issues and really not a concern of pathogen issues. Uh, in the case of the former, um, most of the nutrients that pass through us uh, end up in our urine. So uh, feces is actually a fairly uh, nutrient or, or a material. So not a concern for nutrient pollution. Um, and in terms of pathogens, given that uh, in most cases the material has been drying, isolated, drying in an isolated chamber for a year or two years, um, depending on, on the, on the uh, people in the household, how often the chambers fill up, et cetera, uh, somewhere between a year and two years in this case. Um, that's ample time for, uh, for a very high level of pathogen kill. Um, so as long as you know, certain uh, universally accepted practices are followed, it's actually a very, actually a very low risk uh, procedure to empty that material from the chambers and to then bury it on site. So not only uh, that uh, emptying of the feces containers complementary on an annual basis, um, but more and more of, the, of their customers are actually being paid for the urine they produce, uh, which is also uh, normally picked up for free. But they did a, Ethiquina did a, a uh, study recently where they paid several hundred people uh, in exchange for them dropping their urine off uh, at at some uh, regional drop off centers, basically. Um, so in exchange for uh, customers doing the labor of bringing the materials to the, the central facilities, uh, in exchange for that, people were um, paid in um, tokens, which uh, they could then redeem at a variety of local businesses. So based on the exchange rate at the time of writing, when I use this. Um, presentation. Participating customers um, were paid about the equivalent of US for each 20 liters of urine they produce. A couple of years ago, when the exchange rate was better, had I presentation then, I would have said uh, that it was closer to $5 for each 20 liters. Um, but currently, in terms of uh, the South African Rand and the US dollar, it's about $1.64 for each 20 liters consists of six or more people and uh, which produces two 20 liter jerry cans of uh, urine a week. and that's how they're typically uh, transported is their the urine is um, allowed to in plastic yellow jerry cans yellow in the appropriate place and under facilities so uh for two 20-liter jerry cans a week, this equates to additional annual revenue for that household of approximately 170 U.S. dollars, which is a not, a, a not unsubstantial amount in a part of the world where the unemployment rate is currently at 30, 30% and 42% of the population earns less than uh, 3,150 U.S. dollars a year. There's a slide that shows what you might see at one of those regional drop-off centers centralized drop-off centers. Um, see the color coding and the equivalent uh, in, in RAND, is it in the monetary equivalent. So for one liter uh, dropped off, you get four, correction, one RAND. For 20 liters, you get five RAND. Again, five, five RAND is about $1.64 right now. Also valid to this discussion uh, is the fact that the Ethiquini municipality, in conjunction with uh, the Swiss Federal Institute of Aquatic Sciences and Technology, uh, which the uh, acronym of EWAG, um, has recently completed a study that examined the feasibility of three methods, three scientific methods, all aimed at isolating the nutrients present in urine high toward reuse. Um, the first was the production of struvite, which is 
spelled S-T-R-U-V-I-T-E, which is perhaps most familiar to us in this room as kidney stones, um, it, in which uh, upwards of 90% of the phosphorus and a portion of the nitrogen, but unfortunately none of the potassium, was precipitated out of urine using some form of magnesium, like bittern, which is the salty brine produced during sea salt production, or an ethylene-based magnesium salt. Granulated crystals which result from this process are, according to the Open Source Sustainable Sanitation and Water Management website, an odorless and easy to store bioavailable slow-release fertilizer. So the process for producing struvite is actually a very low energy, very simple process. Really all you need is a source of some sort of magnesium um, or magnesium. Uh, it would be great if you live near the coast and there was sea salt production nearby. You could hold of that bittern. Um, otherwise, the other uh, sources are typically uh, a mined product. But again, for anyone living the, uh, near the shore, that, that's a great option for folks. The second that was looked at was the more complex dual processes of nitrification and distillation. Remarkably, this combined process yielded, and this is a quote, practically all of the nutrients present in urine. And so whereas the, the method I talked about earlier, which produces uh, struvite. Um, this is a, this additional process or produces a, ver a very concentrated form of liquid. The advantage of struvite, another advantage, is that uh, odorless crystal, uh, which is lightweight, easy to store, easy to transport um, material. Uh, if you were going towards a concentrated uh, route, then this uh, process I just described uh, shows great promise, and it also gets out majority of the nutrients that are in urine, whereas struvite really touches two of the. The third uh, method that they looked at involves several different forms of electrolysis, which relate to environmental pollution and malodor, end quote, um, aid in the nitrification process, and better facilitate the extraction of nutrients undertaking a struvite precipitation process. So uh, with any luck, it's, uh, it sounds like, um, based on this study, uh, there also you know, the, the same study looked at, at monetizing urine described uh, in which is shown here on the slide that's still up. Uh, hopefully, Ethiquini will move, continue to move towards a, a system whereby they are reusing, um, at the very least, the the urine they. All right, moving on, uh, we'll across the uh, head north uh, up to Sweden. And we'll uh, watch a quick video that describes uh, some uh, a community in outside of Stockholm, Sweden, that is utilizing uh, eco sanitation. Sweden has become um, a pioneer in the development of ecological sanitation. Even in um, European community countries, there are millions of households without uh, proper sanitation. And uh, even here we have uh, problems because of the pollution of the environment, pollution of our lakes or the Baltic Sea resulting from sewage. There are a number of things that are wrong with flushing. I would say there's nothing that is right with it, uh, because uh, flushing is basically a way of just getting rid, removing stuff we don't want to have in our immediate environment. So we are moving it somewhere else, but somewhere else, someone else gets the problems. And the human body does not produce sewage. It produces urine and feces, which leave the body from different openings and in different directions. And if we do not mix the two, but keep them apart, then the problem would be much easier to solve. This Stockholm-based company research and develop ecological toilet systems specializing in urine diversion. Because of its high nutrient content, the urine is highly valued. It will flush the urine down the drain here. And the human faces 
falls down in the center here. There are a lot of plant nutrients in human excreta, and most of that is actually in the urine. Ninety percent of the nitrogen of human excreta is in urine. So if we want to reuse or recycle human excreta in agriculture, it is the urine part that we should take care of. That's why we try from the beginning to divert the urine and treat that separately. I want to make a parallel with the Swedish marriage ceremony where the vicar says what God has united, men should not divide. And I say it in the same way, what God has divided, men should not unite. Here is a scheme over our cheapest, best solution of the ecological toilet. The urine is collected in the front of the toilet and led through a hose or a tube down to the urine tank. And when the urine tank is full, a lorry comes and sucks the urine out and the feces are falling straight down into a bucket here and you get astonished how small volumes the feces are. 32 families live in this ecological housing cooperative in a suburb of Stockholm. They want to live ecologically, so each family has installed a urine diversion toilet. It's less smelly really than the ordinary toilet because this is a combined toilet and a, how do you say, a ventilation thing. <laughs> and um, so the air goes from the room throughout through the toilet, so it's actually less smell in this one than, than an ordinary. It feels really good to be part of the, the recycling loop. Once the lorry has collected the urine, it's stored in special tanks and monitored by Lennart Kwanstrom. He's part of a research team from Swedish Water who've been studying urine as an agricultural fertilizer for the past five years. It is uh, three tanks. Each can they take care of 150 cubic meters. You must store it uh, minimum six months because you want to kill all bacteria. When the lorry comes with the urine, we just uh, connect to the pipe here. <coughs> and fill up the tanks. We want it to be uh, so simple as possible. So I hope that uh, um, gives you an idea of what's possible. We'll move now uh, across the Atlantic, South America, to the uh, high elevation country of Bolivia. There's been a program uh, in El Alto, Bolivia, which is a, uh, a massive outgrowth of La Paz, it's one of the hot cities in the world, um, which has recently garnered international recognition uh, for its ability to provide low-cost and highly effective sanitation services to a growing list of customers while also creating a local source of nutrient-rich fertilizer for area farmers. There's uh, mirroring some aspects of the Efequini program, yet on a much smaller scale, the 4,500 or so per participants can take additional pride in the knowledge that both their urine and their feces, following a storage period for the former and a managed composting process, Ladder are both provided to area farmers for use as nutrient rich fertilizer, uh, which is the urine component, and a soil mender, which is the composted feces component. So we'll go ahead and watch and watch this short video about a project in Bolivia. But I should also mention that the uh, the project we're about to look at was uh, undertaken by the Fundacion Sumaj Huasi in collaboration with the Stock Environment Institute. Um, Together, they constructed 897 urine diversion dehydration toilets, which benefited around 4,500 people. It's implemented, implemented in a peri-urban area with an estimated population of 27,000 people. This video is called Ecosan in Bolivia. It's about the collection of urine and feces from the separation toilet from a company called Abona in El Alto. El Alto is the city above La Paz in 4,000 meters altitude. It's very quickly growing, so the sanitation situation is getting much worse than before. So the introduction of the urine diversion dehydration toilet system was a good idea. But after that, 
The collection was also organized by a private company called Abona and they are collecting it every Wednesday and Saturday. And that is the car from Abona collecting urine and feces from the houses. Urine is collected in yellow containers as you can see and it's free of charge. The feces, which is collected in half drums, is being collected against a small fee. Collection is pretty safe. The feces is dry, it's covered with ash and soil. Afterwards, the urine and feces is brought to an area outside of the city. There, the urine is stored in big containers, ready for use in the agricultural area around there. And the feces is kept in separate areas outside and away from the people. So this is pretty safe handling. All right, I uh, hope that was informative. Um, uh, north in the Americas up to the island nation of Haiti. Uh, there's an organization in, in operation in Haiti called SOIL, correctly named, which uh, is short for Sustainable Organic Integrated Livelihoods. They have been in operation since 2000, uh, which was just prior to the most recent earthquake. So they were working before and after the, uh, the effects of that earthquake. Uh, they've gone on to become one of the largest waste treatment operations in the country and currently they're treating over a quarter of a million gallons of waste each year. Using the material that they collect from um, 3,500, or correction, uh, toilets that are free, free toilets that are added to uh, 3,500 people, um, those are public toilets, um, and what they collect from over 2,000 people that are currently uh, utilizing a residential uh, that they're calling their eco uh business, which basically provides uh, toilets to people in their homes. So based on the, pro on the, on the material they're collecting, they collect both uh, urine and feces. Uh, well, it depends on which of the two programs because the, the uh, public toilets uh, tend to make use of, doesn't tend to make use of soak waste for the urine, the feces that is collected. Um, whereas for the residents, so it's my understanding that they're collecting both. Um, anyways, using that material, they are producing over 100,000 gallons of uh, compost, which they are uh, selling locally and uh, also uh, providing the um, soil conservation efforts that are so vital in, in, in Haiti. A great project. Here's the, uh, the toilets that I was referring to. They're manufactured on site. Or I should say them in Haiti and then provided to customers on site and cited in, in homes. Containers are collected on a regular basis um, for a small fee. That's a, a fee, a, you know, fee for service. Crossing the Atlantic again, we'll head to Finland. Uh, sustainable sanitation in Finland, according to a leading uh, to to set manufacturers and the Global Dry Toilet Association of Finland. Um, there are some 200,000 manufactured composting toilets uh, that are thought to serve holiday homes matched by the number, uh, same number of dry to uh, other dry toilets. And of course that doesn't, uh, that overlooks people that have manufactured their own toilets that activity. Um, and also those that purchased toilets long before this 
this uh, study was ever. So a very normalized process uh, in the country of Finland, as in Sweden, I should point out. All right, moving on now. A final international example. This is uh, take us back to South America, uh, the country through the city of Lima. There's an organization there called X Runner, uh, which is doing some really great work. Their mission is to bring reliable and sustainable to low-income urban households that do not have a toilet and uh, in people's lives, and also producing a nutrient-rich product uh, similar to the folks in Bolivia. So we'll go ahead and watch this video. This is how it works. Our toilet doesn't require any water and it doesn't smell because it separates urine from feces through different openings. The urine can be infiltrated into the ground or be stored in a container. Both options are safe for people and for the environment. Our toilet comes with a weekly pickup service where customers only need to worry about using and maintaining their toilet while we take care of disposing of the content. We run a central facility hub where the content of the bucket is treated through a composting process. We then clean and disinfect the buckets for the next round of users. When we came here to Lima, it was very important for us that we do something that lasts for people. That if this product has a more personal value than a price value, then, then it's when it's really sustainable. Mm -hmm. Me ha llegado ¿no? al, al tiempo y justo el momento que yo necesitaba me llegó, gracias a Dios, y que ya estoy mejor y este baño es práctico, económico, no se usa agua, más que acerrín y sencillito, pues, ¿no? Lo que hemos estado haciendo en los últimos meses es hacer una prueba con más de 40 familias ya y eh, todos están pagando por el servicio, todos están contentos con el baño y entonces nosotros de ahora queremos... Uh, seguir, uh, creciendo. For us, innovation means creating alternative solutions that are reliable and sustainable to solve the global sanitation crisis. All right, now we'll jump to China. Um, this is a great story that I think you'll appreciate. Um, this is an excerpt, what we're about to watch is an excerpt from a documentary called Urine Superpowers, uh, which was put together by Mona Lisa Production, uh, a French and uh, joint French and British uh, Operation. Um, it details the efforts of Scott Chen. Uh, his Chinese name is Chen Cheng Yang. Uh, he's an apple, cherry, and vegetable farmer in uh, Tianshui, Gansu province in China, who, along with assistance early on of the Soho China Foundation, has been working since 2008 with local schools to collect urine, which he then uses to fertilize the apple and cherry trees in his orchard. So here we go. But who'd have guessed that urine is also indirectly present in our food? Plants need nitrogen to help them grow. Urine is rich in nitrogen. Human beings are rich in urine. So, isn't it about time we found a more intelligent way of using urine? <laughs> China has rediscovered the powers of nitrogen and phosphorus contained in urine. This is a very useful stone. At home you see your parents plant vegetables and fruit trees, and they use a fertilizer called phosphorus. Plants need phosphorus to grow fruits and vegetables to feed the planet. Phosphorus rocks are depleting. And the only way in the near future is to recycle the phosphorus in our urine. To be able to use this precious liquid as a fertilizer, it must not have been contaminated by our excrements or diluted by the water flush. In a world where millions of humans do not have access to modern toilets, an idea emerged to design a new toilet where pure pee can be collected and recycled. 
Children, look at this seat. The poop goes in the big hole and the pee in the little hole. Come and touch. In theory, the boys should feel less concerned because they can pee in the urinals, but they do seem more interested than the schoolgirls. We must collect every drop of urine so that future generations can eat. So do not forget when you go to the toilet. Poop in the big hole and pee in the little one. Scott doesn't miss any opportunity to incite the school children to use his new ecological toilets properly. And what better argument than to show them some of his beautiful apples made in urine. The uh, biggest problem of uh, urine today is that uh, we use uh, uh, flush toilets, we flush and forget. We are using too much water, we are pl polluting too much water, we are uh, visiting uh, nutrients like phosphorus. The phosphorus is quite valuable and uh, rare in the world. So that's the biggest problem of the urine, wasted, polluted water. To illustrate their mascot, the school children have written an ode to cleanliness. From Confucius to Lavoisier, nothing is lost, everything is transformed. Having collected a full tank of pee, Scott is off to his orchard. Oh, oh. There are some nutrients inside the urine, uh, like uh, phosphorus, uh, nitrogen, and potassium. Usually 80% of the nutrients of the human beings are in uh, urine. In six months time, this beautiful flower will give us juicy apples. With the chemical fertilizers and some chemicals like hormones, you can get this non-apple. But with pure urine, you can get a natural apple, like this, sweet and juicy. People are looking back to have uh, organic food uh, without any chemical fetters, but with uh, urine. So like my apples, now it's become some kind of luxury uh, farming products for the consumers. <laughs> Orders are flowing in, but few schools are equipped with the new ecological toilets. In this establishment, Scott will only be able to collect boys' pee. We collect urine from 600 students at this school only, and they produce 300 liters of urine every day. Uh, in our program, we have over 30 scores. Totally, I can use it as fertilizers for over 1,000 apple trees and cherry trees. We just missed uh, to, oh, we forgot to tighten the tubes to the steel uh, tubes. So sometimes uh, too much pressure. Uh, on the wall behind me are the best students of the year. They have respected many virtues, one of which is to be clean in the toilet to make sure every drop of urine to be ended up in my tank. Every drop must go into the urinary. Every drop must go into the urinary. Full tank. Close the tap. Oh. 
See you soon. Scott is becoming a celebrity. He has succeeded in transforming pea juice into apple juice in respect of his ecological vision for the future. Next uh, priority to collect urine is from the factories. So if I c could uh, collect a huge amount of urine from a uh, factory, like 20,000 workers, I can grow a lot of vegetables and some fruit for the local people. All right, that concludes uh, my part three, my three-part testimony to uh, the uh, House Committee on Fish, uh, Wildlife, and Water Resources. Um, as I hope I've described in this part three or this uh, third section, uh, a revolution in sanitation is already underway in other parts of the world, and it's certainly my hope and uh, the hope of others that are doing this good work that that uh, Vermont will soon follow and eventually become a leader. So thank you. Thanks for your willingness to uh, to learn from others. Uh, thanks for your willingness to consider this bill. And uh, I look forward to uh, continuing to participate in the process and ultimately to um, seeing a, uh, a bill that will do what we want it to, which is to really support people in transitioning away from the systems that we are currently utilizing, which have so many problems associated with them, towards a system that actually closes the loop, produces uh, a local supply of uh, nutrient-rich nutrient -rich fertilizer for area farmers that can be low cost, and that also utilizes low cost low tech technology. Stay on the test of time. So, thank you again.